Good. Thank you. Uh, Ron, uh, you say you're looking to get some, some government involvement in some of these hearings uh, that you're calling for with the National Association of Blacks in Solar. What's going on here? Well, Carl, what has happened is there was a report that was put out by Mission Data. A new report dropped of uh, this year deactivated how the electric utilities turned off the data sharing feature on 14 million smart meters. And this is rapid in the DMV market area, and specifically uh, Washington, D.C. And, and Maryland. As we look at the uh, markets as it relates to what we would call energy credits, they're known as that All right, ho- hold it over here before you go further down the road. Explain what they turned out. What is it issue that they, the, the data sharing? What is that? Data sharing uh, call is is basically uh, short for the utility companies have designed software where with these new smart meters that which were installed before they it through the process of, of legislation called net metering where it determines. If a person installs a solar system on on their roof, it will when the sun hits those panels, that is what was called direct current from the sun, a DC. It goes down the electric harness into a converter box and is con- converted to AC, which home appliances and lights and our electricity system runs off. Well, the energy that is not used by that household, that meter has the capability of showing how much energy that goes back into the grid, which goes back to the utility. Well, it takes about a thousand kilowatts to make one kilowatt hour. And in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, we have the highest extracts values in the country, and I would say the world, trading for over $320 a kilowatt hour. Now, these are very, very valuable because of how the legislation was originally drafted by the council headed by Environment and Transportation, headed by Mary Shea, who sits on the council. And what the, the law specifically states is that PEPCO as the utility provider for the District of Columbia, can buy for wind, hydronetics, which is water, nuclear, they can buy those energy credits are considered renewable energy under renewable portfolio standard legislation, which means by year 2032, each market demographics around this country to combat climate change must show how they're going to generate renewables replacing fossil fuels, okay, long and short. So what we have going on here, Carl, is a a simple situation where the information belongs to the people. They pay for it, but the utility companies have turned that option off so if you have a system on your roof, that energy uh, that your system is generate may not show up on your bill. It may not show what was used, what was generated, and what you should be getting a credit or a check back from your local utility. And we're talking about something that has undermined the Biden administration national community solar plan to reach 5 million American citizens by year 2025 and is supposed to reduce, generate a billion dollars in savings for what we call low and moderate income folk coming through the Department of Energy through the LEAP program. So the U.S. attorney in Washington, D.C., Racine, filed a lawsuit back in March of this year. It's gotten little press 
talks about this, but it only dealt with subscription or community solar. It does not speak to the issue of the single family homeowner, small business, or churches that have installed systems on their rooftops. And this is a major problem, and it's not just here in the Washington area. This is a national problem. Uh, obviously it is, but what can you do about it? Do the utility companies like Pepco, do they have the authority to do that, to make these changes without informing the public? Uh, were there hearings, do you know? No, they don't, Carl. That's why you have the Public Service Commission. Now, out of, but back in 2018, Carl, I like to give people some type of history and 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 and, uh, and, and that if the people have a pen and paper, if they will write down positive change, PC dot com, because I like people to be able to go and read this information for themselves. They can go to our website and find this information. You will find that an organization that started here in Washington, D.C., called Neighborhoods United, specifically did an article that spoke to those to those issues. Now, as I indicated, this is regulated by your local public service commission and your local council. And there has been a number of hearings re- surrounding this the, these I- issues. Now, this particular article was dated uh, November 21st, 2022, which it spoke to in a very, very short, succinct matter of what is going on. What is happening? This was an article published by Neighborhoods United. We are concerned that Monopoly Utility Pepco is taking money from low and moderate income D.C. families and solar owners. A new investigation from the D.C. Attorney General found that Pepco overcharged 6,800 low income families who take part in community solar. Community solar lets people benefit from solar if they are unable to install solar on their where they live. Community solar participants can buy or lease shares of a solar rate. They earn a credit on their utility bills based on how much electricity the, their share generates. The report further found that Pepco inappropriately installed its own electric meters at community solar sites. This enables the, the, enables the utility to pay participants less than they earn. Now, this harms all district residents. It undermines the public confidence in community solar programs. Now, what is very unique about this call is Washington, D.C., New York, and several other states have been basically identified by the Department of Energy to launch a pilot program. And we know I always call Washington, D.C. like a test tube, baby. When the federal government wants to do something, they start here. But New York is a part of that, Washington, several other cities, that they are launching this national community solar product piece. And uh, there is information that will show on our website who those partners are. What my concerns are, Carl, is the fact as the National Association of Blacks and Solar, we've looked at this inf- at, at this issue, and we found that this issue exists in whether they be what they we call, uh, use the term regulated or deregulated states. Regulated states that means that the utility companies control the price of energy, cost of energy, distribution of energy, and basically the the state and legislatures have allowed these uh, these monopolies to take place in this country. But we as consumers of electricity and citizens, we are the ones who subsidize the whole process. So when we began to look at a situation in, in, in Washington, D.C., where you have homeowners whose meters have been t- basically turned off and they only have 
one meter that is working where there should be two meters in that home. And if that contractor or that installation company didn't provide that homeowner with an app when they got that TV system on their roof, they have no way, any way to monitor that other than to call the the, uh, company. And as we began to look at how solar is being deployed around this country call, each jurisdiction, each county, they set their own rules and regulations. So there's nothing uniform in uniformity about this. And this is why we need congressional hearings on these issues to raise these issues about how does this relate to the Justice 40 initiative that the Biden administration says that 40 percent of all of these benefits coming out of these federal agencies and through the Department of Energy is supposed to benefit low and moderate income communities of color. I mean, you can't have it both ways.